function and surface S is the part of the sphere, the unit sphere above xy plane. xy plane means z equal to 0. So this is the sphere given to us and if I consider this boundary of the surface S to be C, then this becomes the circle x square plus y square equal to 1 because this boundary is intersecting the x y plane that is where z is equal to 0. So if this surface is intersecting the x y plane then I will be getting a circle where we take z equal to 0 so that circle is x square plus y square equal to 1. So let's write this. So let's consider C to be the boundary of the surface S. Then we are getting the unit circle C to be x square plus y square equal to 1. Just put here z equal to 0. Please note that S is the part of the sphere above x, y plane. And we are getting this to be the boundary of the surface S that is the circle C which is intersecting the x, y plane. Is it okay, fine? So by Stokes theorem, we have the line integral over C dot product of f vector with d r vector is equal to the surface integral of curl of f vector dot product with n vector ds. Right? So let's evaluate this first. So now f vector dot dr vector. Okay, what is f vector given to us? It is y i vector plus z j vector plus x k vector. So writing here f vector taking its dot product with dr vector that is dx i vector plus dy j vector plus dz k vector. For if you take r vector to be equal to x i vector plus y j vector plus z k vector. So when taking the dot product of these two, we are getting y dx plus z dy plus x dz. And now taking the line integral on this, because on C, z equal to 0, so dz is also equal to 0. So this is equal to the line integral of z is 0 and dz is 0. So we are getting y dx. I'm interested to change these two polar coordinates. So for that, just putting x equal to cos of phi and y equal to sine of phi. Right? So dx becomes negative sine of phi d phi. And the limits of this phi is from 0 to 2 pi. It is your circle. The integration of y dx. y is sine of phi. And dx is negative sine of phi. Then d phi. From here. And the limits from 0 to 2 pi. The integrand becomes negative of sine square phi d phi. I can take the limit from 0 to pi by 2. And multiplying this with 4. So this is equal to negative 4. Okay. Because the limits are from 0 to pi by 2, we can use the reduction formula over here. What is the power of sine? It is 2. So in the numerator, we always subtract the powers from the odd numbers. So this is 2 minus 1 until we get 0. So that's it. Divided by, in the denominator, we first write the power and then subtract the powers with odd numbers until we get 0. So this is 2 minus 2. So this is 0. So there is no need to subtract anything. And whenever we are having the even powers for the function, we always multiply the result with pi by 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1 in the numerator. So we are getting this to be negative pi. Right? What is on the left hand side? It is the line integral of f vector dot product with dr vector. Please mark this as 1. So for the Stokes theorem on the left hand side, we are getting this value to be negative pi, right? Let's check this value and this value should also comes out to be negative pi to find the surface integral of 
curl of f vector dot product with n vector ds. So first I'm evaluating the curl of f vector for f vector given to us is y i vector plus z j vector plus x k vector. Writing the first component of f vector that is y then writing the second component and the third component. So solving this, this is i vector partial derivative of x with respect to y is 0 minus partial derivative of z with respect to z is 1 minus j vector partial derivative of x with respect to x is 1 minus partial derivative of y with respect to z is 0 plus k vector partial derivative of z with respect to x is 0 minus partial derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So we are getting the result to be minus i vector minus j vector minus k vector. Now to find this n vector using the spherical polar coordinates what is x sine of theta cos of phi and y is equal to sine of theta sine of phi and z is equal to cos of theta right and this n vector is equal to xi vector plus yj vector plus zk vector so i'm using the spherical coordinates over here this is sine of theta cos phi i vector plus sine of theta sine phi j vector plus cos of theta k vector and now finding the dot product of these two. So the curl of f vector dot product with n vector is equal to the curl of f vector we have got i vector minus j vector minus k vector taking its dot product with n vector so writing here complete n vector and when taking the dot product we get i dot i is 1 so this is minus of sine theta cos phi then minus of sine theta sine phi and then minus cos of theta. Now we need to take the surface integral for this. The surface integral of this complete integrant taking minus outside sine theta cos phi plus sine theta sine phi plus cos of theta and ds will be changed into because of the spherical polar coordinates it is sine of theta d theta d phi right so reason ds is equal to sine of theta d theta d phi we have used the spherical polar coordinates now this is equal to writing here the double integral negative sign outside Writing the complete integrand here and then sine of theta d theta d phi. Because first I need to integrate with respect to phi. So I am interchanging this. I am writing here d phi and here d theta. So writing the limits of phi first. So the limits of phi is from 0 to 2 pi. And the limits of theta is always from 0 to pi by 2. For the spherical polar coordinates. So this is minus the double integration 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi by 2 and multiplying sine theta inside the bracket. So this is sine square theta cos phi plus sine square theta sine phi plus sine of theta cos theta and then d phi d theta. Integrating with respect to phi first, integration of cos phi is sine phi. So this is sine square theta sine phi. Integration of sine phi is negative cos phi. So this is negative of sine square theta cos phi. Plus here I am having 1. So integration of 1 is phi. And writing here sine of theta cos of theta. The limits of phi is from 0 to 2 pi and writing here d theta. Putting the upper limit first, we are getting sine of 2 pi. 
so that will be 0 and here cos of 2 pi is 1 so this gives me minus sine square theta when putting the upper limit and here I am getting 2 pi sine theta cos theta right so these are the results when I put the upper limit so this is minus integration from 0 to pi by 2 and first term is 0, second term is minus sin square theta and the third term is plus 2 pi sin theta cos theta. And now putting the lower limit. So lower limit that is 0, sin of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1. And here this is 0. So I am getting only the second term that is minus sine square theta. Right. So this is minus sine square theta. And here d theta. Managing these negative signs we get plus sine square theta. And this positive sine square theta is cancelled out with this negative sine square theta. So we get negative of integration from 0 to pi by 2. And I am having 2 pi sine of theta cos theta d theta. Taking this 2 pi outside and now integrating this with respect to theta. So if I take sine of theta to be equal to t, I am getting this to be cos of theta d theta to be equal to dt. Right? So this is minus of 2 pi integration. Okay. When theta is 0, we get sine of 0 to be 0. So lower limit for t is 0. When putting theta equal to pi by 2, we get sine of pi by 2 that is 1. So t is 1 for the upper limit. And this is t dt. So this is minus of 2 pi. Integrating t with respect to t, we get t square divided by 2. Limits from 0 to 1. So Cancelling this 2 with this. So this is minus of pi. Putting the upper limit, we get 1 minus 0. So that is equal to minus pi. So we have also got the value of the surface integral to be minus pi. So this value is minus pi. So we have got the right hand side of the Stokes theorem to be also equal to minus pi. Hence the Stokes theorem is verified for the given function f. That is the line integral of dot product of f vector with dr vector. This is equal to minus pi and is also equal to the surface integral of curl of f vector dot product with n vector ds. So as both the sides of the Stokes theorem is equal to minus pi, hence Stokes theorem is verified. Okay, thank you. Stay blessed.